My name is John Blank, and I'm going to be your facilitator tonight, so I wanted to go ahead and get started with some things. But as far as a couple of brief logistics, can you hear me in the back okay with the, the fans? Okay. Um, we do have a microphone here later, so if you're having big troubles or later when you speak, if, if somebody is kind of quiet spoken, we can give you a microphone. But um, we wanted to get started with uh, uh, things right away so that we can um, get you involved in this process. So um, if you want to go to the next slide, can you, um, what I want to do is just to make sure that you're in the right place. But uh, tonight, um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the people here to listen to what you have to say. And then I'm going to give you um, a brief overview of the uh, hiring process so that you're aware of what the hiring process is and um, answer any questions that you might have. And then get to uh, the best part of the evening, which is to hear from you about what you uh, think is unique about Franklin High School and what people should know about it if they're uh, looking at being a principal here, and uh, give us your input on what characteristics you'd like for uh, for them. So if you want to go to the next one, as far as some brief introductions of some people here, uh, there's a person here that maybe many of you know, but uh, Greg Wallach, uh, did you want to mention your new title, et cetera? So. I guess my new title is Senior Director. I was a region administrator in years past, and um, Maybe you know who I am because I worked with the district for quite a while, supervising some of that time in Franklin High School. And I also happen to be a parent of a senior this year and a member of the class of 69 myself. So I have a lot of connections to this community here, and I'm just as anxious as you are to have a good picture with my daughter next year. Um, what I do, though, is, is I have a partner, and we supervise high schools in the city. There's a change in the organization plan for next year, and it'll be uh, cluster directors who, cluster senior directors who supervise K-12, and Shay James will be the, um, cluster, the senior director for the Franklin Cluster K-12. So Shay will still be around um, guiding the work in this part of town. And so what we're looking for is someone who can fill her um, considerably uh, size foot um, shoes here at Franklin High School for the coming year. After we've done that, we'll be looking for a VP the vacancy there as well. So um, just know that this process is ongoing, and John will talk to you more about that. But I'm really pleased to be here. I'm really here to listen to what you've got to say about what you're looking for, what we're looking for in a principal. Thanks. Oh, can I just ask really quickly, they're not hiring a VP until they hire? That's right, because okay. we really like the principal to get to help with their team. Sure. And so as we happen to have a vacancy here, we'll be looking at that as soon as we get this one to go. Okay. So before I, I introduce anybody else, I did I want to have the interpreters uh, talk a little bit and tell people who they are so that we can make sure everybody can be understanding. So, uh, Louisa, would you like to go first? Yeah. Hi, my name is Louisa. I'm the Spanish interpreter. Somebody needs some Spanish interpreter. So if anybody, do uh, you want to ask them if anybody needs your services yet? And we'll know if they need Anybody? Uh, ¿Hay alguien aquí que habla español y que necesita intérprete? Yo hablo español, pero yo entiendo. Okay, okay. We do have headphone sets for people too, if they would like that simultaneous. Hello, hi, my name is Christina, and I'm a Russian interpreter. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Кристина. Я буду переводчик сегодня на русском языке. Если вы желаете, у нас есть наушники, которые вы можете взять вот там, и у нас будет одновременный перевод. So, um, a couple of other introductions. Uh, maybe Keith Hathorn, maybe he can introduce himself to you folks here. Sure. My name is Keith Hawthorne, and I work in human resources for PPS, and I'm the uh, talent management manager, so we're staffing and recruiting. Sorry about the pronunciation. That's fine. Okay. Uh, then I wanted to introduce myself a little bit, too. Um, before you talked, uh, there was a reminder there that when you talk tonight, if you could when you get ready to speak, especially the first time, if you could say your name and say what your connection is to the school, like if you're a parent or a teacher, um, 
or you know, um, or somebody in leadership positions here, that would be great. Um, so um, briefly, I wanted to introduce myself, not because I like to talk about myself, but because I wanted to bring it up as an example of sort of the ethics that we want to use this for. Uh, I was principal at Maplewood School uh, in Southwest for about 11 years. I was there a long time because I got really lucky and it was a good fit for me, it was a good fit for the school. And then I was getting ready to retire uh, because the principal job was kind of hard. And um, so uh, I told my staff early in the year that I was going to retire. And then they, uh, they opened up a position called Director of Administrative Hiring. And I said I was really interested in that. And um, so I talked to some people about that and what that job would be like. And um, some of the first comments I got were some of the staff at my school who said, John, I have to tell you, I've been in three different schools and we've had three different principal selection processes and I was in on that and I hated the process. Nobody told us why we got the person we did. Nobody told us when things were going to happen. Uh, <coughs> we didn't understand the process and it felt very secretive. Um, and. Um, so then I went and talked to somebody who had just been made a principal. And I said, uh, what do you think of the process? And she said, I hated it. Nobody told me what was going on. I didn't understand why I was chosen. And they made me wait a long time. And I said, it really didn't have to be like that. And I felt like it was so important. I saw uh, with colleagues and myself, I saw what it was like when it wasn't a good fit and, and how important it was. So I told them that I would take the job only if they promised that this was going to be a transparent process as much as possible, because we talk about human resources kind of issues, uh, but also that we would be ethical and say, we want to get the best people there. It isn't about somebody being owed a favor or some, moving somebody because they're having difficulties, but that it would be really to get the best people and then get them the best match. And I've been really uh, fortunate with that. This is my uh, fourth hiring season. Uh, I'm not the director anymore because they restructured that. I'm just doing some of my favorite parts that include getting this input. Uh, so I'm still involved and I really love working with the people that do make the decisions and um, feel very good about that. Um, all the people that are on the team, including the uh, superintendent. So, uh, so that's the ethics about what I uh, bring here and I hope that will come through in some of the other things that we're going to talk about. So. Um, you can interrupt me at any time tonight, but I'm just going to go through maybe with the next slide. This is the one that got the most attention from my staff when I left, uh, and it's changed a little bit since then. But basically, uh, to let you know the selection process, it's a four-step process. Tonight, here tonight, is the beginning of step one. Um, so if you're looking around thinking, how come we don't have more people here, or oh, what, you know, somebody's missed a chance to give input, uh, they, they haven't missed a chance at all. That, that we do want to give input as much as possible. So we will do that through uh, what you say tonight, and Keith is going to be here to, to type what you say. Um, we can do it um, uh, through sources. I think one of the last slides in your handout has the link to an online survey where you can go and uh, Fill that out uh, anonymously. Just tell them if you're a staff or a parent member or a student, and you can fill that out at that link there. Um, I know that right now on the <coughs> district website, if you go to that link, it shows there, and that uh, survey is available online in um, three other languages besides English, I believe. Uh, I believe it's Mandarin, uh, Vietnamese, Spanish, and maybe Russian. I, I can't remember exactly, but that's available in other languages. You can send emails. There's an email link to Miley Halverson, who works in human resources. She's kind of gathering all that. So um, there's that. There's uh, uh, writing letters if you want to, that kind of thing. About the only way we don't take input is through telephone calls, because we want to make sure we're not writing things down incorrectly for you. Um, so we want to gather as much of that information as possible. Once we've gathered that information, then we go to step two. Step two involves um, roughly there is uh, roughly once a week there's an um, administrative hiring team that meets and talks about all the schools that have vacancies. They talk about the people that have been applying. They talk about principals that maybe say they're interested in making another move. Uh, that team includes uh, uh, it includes the chief academic officer, but that title has changed now too. Um, it, in, it includes all of the um, uh, the, the new directors, uh, the senior directors, so people like Greg sitting on that on that team, the ones that really know and supervise the principals. 
because they're all there. The chief of uh, human resources, the chief of the uh, equity program for Portland, um, and I'm probably forgetting a couple other people. But they meet and they talk about all this information. They will read what you say and what you write word for word because they really want to know what you uh, what you think. Then when they get together at those meetings, they'll have a discussion about what's going on. And at some point, the question is asked, do we have a current sitting Portland Public School principal that's really the best match for what we're, we've heard now from, in this case, Franklin High School? And if the answer to that is yes, we have a Portland principal that we really, I think, is the best match, then they skip step three and they go to step four and say, that's the person that's going to be your next principal. And they weigh out those people versus the applicants that we've been getting. But if in that meeting, if they say, I don't think we have somebody that's really the best match that, that wants to make a move or that is willing to make that move, that kind of thing, then they would go to the assessment process that I'll tell you about in a minute about assessing the applicants. And they'll look and say, do we have a match between what we have uh, heard from your school and what the principal's uh, applicants are like. So to be uh, an applicant, um, well, here again, to, to be a current sitting principal, by that I mean um, it can't be an assistant principal, it can't be a vice principal, um, it, had, and it can't be a principal from some other district that would just automatically be put in there. If they're from another district or anybody else, they have to go through the application process that we'll talk about here in a second, okay? Um, then they assess those applicants, make those discussions, et cetera, there. Now, I wouldn't be transparent if I wasn't saying also, though, that Carol Smith, as a superintendent, is held responsible for whatever happens in the schools and ultimately for the principals there. So she therefore has the right to do, as I say, put it, whatever she wants, whatever she wants. But I can tell you that in all four of the years and the hiring season that I've been working with her on, she's really adi adamant and uh, consistent in saying she wants to hear about the input first. So often if she has had to make some other change based on this, it's been because maybe it was incredibly late in the year and maybe had to set up an, uh, an interim principal, you know, that kind of thing. But she always wants to hear what that input is first and, and then talk to the regional administrators, the ones that really know the building is the best. Okay? So, um, if we want to go to the next slide, then, too, uh, just to let you know briefly about the process, there's lots of details in here, but I'll go over them really briefly. People that are applying right now have to go through these blue boxes, and they have to be successful in each of those boxes as they move from left to right. So we opened this process up in, uh, I think it was late December is when we first did it, and we still have openings. We still have people currently applying. But to apply, they have to turn in an online application that has minimum qualifications. Like the minimum is they have to have been an assistant principal or a vice principal, something like that, in a school uh, for at least two years. And they do a writing about three different questions, uh, including a racial equity question. So we take that writing and we black out their name and just put an ID number and we rank that uh, and we give that a score on a rubric so that we don't really know who the person is you know, to do that fairly. If they do well on that, then they go to the screening interview. Yes, I have a question. Um, at a high school level or at any level, elementary, middle school, high school? So far at this level, it could be at any level. Any level. So we'll go okay. through that. Yeah, yep. just wanted to. I had a question, too, because uh -huh. I've sat on hiring committees before that hired principals that hadn't been assistant principals or principals before, or one that was working to get her principal's degree certificate. Mm -hmm. So is that a new change that they have to have been that, or is that just? I know it's been at least since I started that work four years ago, where it, they're not supposed to they were supposed to have had at least that two years minimum uh, before they started. And you said, answered his question, for all schools, not just high schools. Yes, yeah, they can. Some years we set it up for an elementary pool and then in addition a high school pool. This year we opened it up to just a pool to be a principal because we wanted to get to know as many people as possible because sometimes we can make some predictions about high schools, for instance, but sometimes there's surprises and we wanted to make sure that we were starting to meet some of these people before uh, in anticipation of that. Yes, sir. I don't see any questions. They interviewed the mm -hmm. teachers that they worked with. Maybe they've been a high school court in the last yeah. 10 years. That would be, uh, they uh, they uh, they uh, they uh, 
That's part of it. Uh, the fourth step, and as we go from left to right, we score the writing prompt. Then we call them in for a screening interview and talk to them, get to get a feel for what they're like, ask them a lot of questions. And then the next step is that they ask me to do a lot of the reference checks, where I call. Oh, reference checks. I'm sorry, I'm not going to. Um, actually, talk to you. The teachers that have worked in the school, in the school, they're not necessarily in the reference. Yeah. And the teachers that were really upset with you with the reference checks. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to. We don't go out and talk and find out if they done well in the other. So far, we have not made visits to the other schools. It's been mostly the calling of going to supervisor. Not really. Like that. Yeah, that's why we talk to their supervisor first. Who says sometimes they'll put them as a reference, but but that's an important part of that because we want to find out can the people and do the people behave um, similar to what they say they can do in the interview. We want to make sure that they, if they say I'm really good at this, we want to find out are they really good at that. You know, talking to the other people. That we do if they've listed that as a reference, right. and then later, if they're from another district, we do randomly call teachers that are in there. So that's not, for, in, our not in our own district, no. And usually it's because the people that supervise them know some of their assistant principal work and other things, and that they've had contact with them, so they've been supervising them for a while. Yes, sir, they're in the, yes. On um, this graphic, RA is, stands for what? Regional administrator. Yeah, right. okay. That's an old. Yeah, I, I haven't updated that new term. So they're involved with this. Um, after we do the reference checks, if that looks good enough, then we take it to one of my favorite activities, which is the walkthrough, which means two of the regional administrators or senior directors meet them at the district office, drive with them in a car to a school, and meet me there. We walk around the school, uh, we talk to other uh, students, and watch how they interact with people. And uh, they go in and do a classroom observation. We come out and ask them questions and, and uh, look at how they've done that. And if they do well in that, then they go on to the final pool. Yes. Hi, my name is Karen Polis. I'm a teacher here at Franklin High School. My question for you is, since we are in the summer time, when you get a candidate to the instructional walkthrough section, where and how will that be able to take place? Yeah, um, we've got uh, some schools that have summer programs, like Summer Scholars, and so in the past we've gone to Benson, we've gone to, I think, Irvington. But it would be a high school, right? You're not going to take a person yes. as oh, a yes. candidate for high school to a middle school you bet. or elementary school. Yeah, that, yeah, that's totally true. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot you. That's um, I'm Jeremy Soran. I've been a parent here and I also volunteer and a coach here. Um, I've been involved in a couple of principal searches in the past, and there was a role for a parent staff interview mm -hmm. and then recommendation, and that appears to no longer be the case. Yeah, this year they changed the process, and that is not part of the process this year. We haven't done it for any of the schools that are so far, so that was dropped in the process. And then I have a second question. This may be a little premature, but um, given that it's July, and given that most, I think, principal, probably most of your work is done in the spring or in the second half of the season, is there any possibility that we would end up, or we might end up with an interim principal for one year who would be essentially a vastly experienced caretaker who would do it for a year while, and then we could go through a whole longer process in the second semester? Did you hear his question in the back? Did you hear that? Okay. Um, so yes, that is a possibility, because sometimes that's happened before, and it depends a lot on what is said and what we get for input to see how well that matches, uh, but that is a possibility. Yes. Uh, Lisa Zuniga, I'm a parent, and TSA president. So are people applying to be principal at Franklin, or are they just applying to be a principal somewhere? In general, they yes. apply to say, I want to be a principal in that principal pool, knowing that they would then have a part in talking about some possibilities. Sometimes people apply and they think it's, you know, we tell them it's for that pool because sometimes as the year progresses and maybe there's some shifting, that there's a new school that opens up that maybe they didn't know about before. Um, I'd say recently, though, some people have applied saying, I've heard this school is now open. I didn't know that before, and now I'm really interested. And so um, we've got some people that I'll be doing some of the fairly beginning work here real quick you know, to start getting that process going. So, some people would do that. 
We also have some principals that say, no, I don't want to change my school. I want to stay here, but then a school opens up, and sometimes they'll contact the regional administrator and say, I didn't know this school would be open, but I would really be interested in you know, kind of making that, because that's a, maybe a better fit, or that's something else they want to do. So. Hi, my name is Phyllis Shelton. I'm a mother of a junior this year, and <coughs> I, um, I've also been on one of those parent-teacher committees before, and it wasn't a very satisfying experience, mm -hmm. so I don't miss it at all, um, what you're <laughs> describing. I'm wondering, you mentioned the vice principal position that's open won't be filled until the principal is. How about other positions on staff or coaches that are empty right now? Will, those, will someone else be taking care of those right now so that you're fully staffed for, for this fall? I believe so. I might. Is that something you? Well, like I said, Shay is still around, okay. and so um, she and Dennis, who is still with us, and to some extent Devon, can still work on that process. And so um, things will continue moving forward on that. Um, it will be a little bit different than it would have been, but uh, it will still happen. But she in terms of, were you asking like in terms of like if there's teachers that need to be hired, who's yes. going to be doing that? Then okay. Um, so, uh, okay, so maybe the next slide we can go on to that. Um, just to kind of get your head started uh, to think a little bit about the characteristics that you'd like, uh, and then I'll be done here real soon, I promise. Right now the principals get evaluated in these main bullet areas. Like uh, teacher evaluations, each one of these bullets has five or six different kind of rubrics or subparts to that. Uh, but it includes some things like uh, how uh, well do they help understand and help the community set a vision for the school and keep that vision moving forward, yeah, communicate that vision, how well they help monitor the learning that's going on, um, how well they help uh, with professional development for their teachers. Um, it involves how well do they work with the community and do they make uh, all parents, if possible, even the ones that feel like they, they, they're not welcome in school, do they make those people feel um, that they have ways to be involved in the school and do they get the businesses involved and work with the community and then also uh, there's still part of it that still means you know how well do they keep the school running I know we've got, we've got the advantage of Steve here who has been a business manager who, uh, uh, who can help with a lot of the management part but for a lot of principals they still are kind of responsible for making sure that the, uh, that there's enough staff hired and that there's people supervising where they're supposed to be and um, that they can make the school run and when somebody says my room is too hot you know they know who to tell you know, to do that so there's still a management piece yes get evaluated and that's one of the subparts of their evaluation is how well do they work with students and how well do they interact and make students feel welcome, etc. Uh, from other districts, we asked uh, the reference check questions and we also asked them questions about having them describe what they do, how they work, and when we check with their supervisor, that's one of the important parts about that. Uh, how, well, how well do they work with families, but also how well they work with students. That's an important part. Uh, let me make sure that's.
So um, we do, um, for people that are coming from Portland Public Schools that, that are here, um, we do, that is part of how they're evaluated. So we look at, and I take a look to make sure as part of reference checks, we look at how their evaluations were. And that includes uh, part about how they work with students. And then when, if it's somebody from outside the district, we ask a lot of questions of them and of their supervisors to see how well do they work with students. Uh, and that includes how well they motivate them, how well they help guide them, how well they connect with them, um, and uh, it, it, like they, uh, uh, also how they work with their families too and work and communicate with families. Okay? Yeah, that's part of the process uh, in a couple different steps along the way. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, as a, as a principal, I felt like that too, because as a principal, I know I wanted to know how the teachers experienced me. I wanted to learn from that and things like that. So right now, that's not a formalized part of the process. Um, maybe in a similar way as we don't necessarily make part of the teacher evaluations to go and ask the parents to evaluate the, the teachers, but uh, I know there's been talk in the past about possibly something like a 360 review where you pull some people together and ask questions about that. But, but often, the people that evaluate them right now will be aware if there's been complaints about them or if people are making compliments about them so they get some, uh, some kind of anecdotal information about people there. Okay? Yes? Yeah, my name is Kendra Marsh Jacobson and I'm a parent, but I wanted to, a number of us have a question uh, hearkening back to something Jeremy was saying. When you said that they did away with the parent-teacher panel, we, we were wondering who's they? Yeah, that's the administrative hiring team that I talked about, um, including the superintendent that had a discussion about what what they wanted that process to be. And why? Um, I think there's a couple reasons. Uh, one is that, um, um, well, there's several different reasons, and I've got some of my own opinions about that too, but uh, one is that they were, we were having a lot of difficulties with confidentiality, which is such a huge issue here in Portland. We had some people that, Sign. I made them sign in blood, because I did the training with that, that they would not talk about this, but sometimes they would go out, call that person's previous school and talk to a friend there, or text him on a break and come back and say, we shouldn't hire that person because my friend said such and such. And So there's a couple of those incidents. Uh, and a couple of it was because of, even though I would say several times, you're not really choosing the principal, you're just giving us feedback, but a lot of times people were really upset that maybe the person they thought was clear that they really wanted, maybe they didn't get, and we couldn't tell them by confidentiality, maybe that that person took a job somewhere else, or that we found some things in the reference checks maybe that we followed up with, so it just got really difficult and really time consuming in terms of you know trying to go through all that. Uh, so they said, let's try it this year. And the last reason being, and I think this is the best one, was that the, this uh, team had been together for several years in a row. There used to be there was a lot of changes in the regional administrators, but these folks were had been together for about three years, had gone through this process, and really were spending time in schools, getting to know their schools, so that they felt like they really had a good picture of what was happening there. Thanks. Um, then briefly about the school performance goals, they have to sit with their supervisor and, and talk a little bit about some of the achievement and how they would measure the achievement of students uh, to make sure that was part of that and set those goals too. So, um, so next slide, Keith. Then. So this is my last slide before, uh, before we talk and also the slide with the links. And that's as a reminder, um, this process is ultimately about making sure we get the best principal and the best leader for the students. And as I've said to people before, this is not about taking care of the adults. And by that I mean, if somebody came and said, I've been an assistant principal in this district for 20 years and you owe me this job, or this would be a convenient kind of a thing, um, we make sure that we're checking each other to make sure that that does not happen. That we have to, I've had to tell my colleagues and other people that were applying, this is a highly competitive process and we only want to get the best 
and then try to get the best match. And um, so for the sake of the students that we have here. So on that next slide, just in case you can't uh, see it, uh, this is the last slide. Okay. I just wanted to know why you had a picture of my JV team instead of my varsity. Uh, <laughs> I thought, I bet you at this school people are going to know exactly who that is. So I, I tried to make it kind of small just, just in case. They, yeah. <laughs> You know, I thought it was listed as about 2012-13 that they had done a really super job that year. So, okay. So this is some of the other places that we can give input. But I'm going to ask Keith now if you want to just press escape and then go to um, the W, the Word document on the bottom. So um, this is my suggestion for starting to get input from you. And that's that um, we really want to hear uh, tonight what you think. What I found that seems to work best is for me to be kind of the uh, master of ceremonies and facilitate that, and I'll try and keep track of who's raised their hand and says they would like to say something. I think tonight, given that it's cooler with fans on, I'll probably give you the mic if you're comfortable with that and have you uh, say a few things. Keith is going to try and keep up and capture the essence of what you've got there, so don't pay any attention to the spelling because you know how hard that would be. But if you do see him say something where maybe he said, uh, we do want and you meant we don't want or something you know make sure you call that out so that we get it right and, and go from there so um, so with that I think actually uh, and I'm sorry I forget your name sir but I think uh, we thought we would open it up but you've got a written statement that maybe you wanted to start with is that is that okay with you okay thank you uh, is this working no <coughs> I'm, I'm Roger Kirshner. I'm the outgoing uh, president of the, of the PTA uh, here and um, the incoming uh, District 2 uh, director for Oregon uh, uh, PTA, uh, which encompasses the entire uh, school district. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, well, now the volume has been adjusted. Uh, welcome to Franklin High School. Enjoy our air conditioning while you're here. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge the outstanding leadership provided Franklin in, and its community by Ms. Shay James. We are truly sad to lose her <laughs> as Franklin's principal, and we are excited that you will become the supervising principal of the, port of the Franklin Cluster. We wish her all success. Now to the task at hand. <coughs> A candidate for principal of Franklin High School should know the following. Franklin has the most racially, ethnically, and culturally diverse student body in Portland Public Schools. As such, it has the largest number of historically underserved students in the district. English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Somali, and Russian are the most predominant languages spoken. Its faculty is dedicated to achieving ed educational excellence for its students. Currently, Franklin uh, boasts a graduation rate of 85%, far exceeding the district and state averages. Graduation gaps among groups have been closed. Emphasis on college and career readiness has been Franklin's education focus and vision. Franklin's administrative staff has incurred many changes, especially among the vice principals. In my daughter's four years at Franklin, there have been a new, pre, a, a new vice principal every year. More stability would be welcome. Here, the new principal will, will need to continue to mentor a strong leadership team. Bilingual fluency is a desirable attribute to enable key administrators to work with students and their parents. Ideally, Franklin's principal should be an educational leader, that is to say, a principal teacher, eager to inspire excellence in an educational team of fellow teachers, counselors, administrators, coaches, and support staff. The principal should be welcoming and open to all students, faculty, and staff. Franklin should be, uh, Franklin's principal should be willing to work closely with parents, alumni, volunteers, 
and engaged in community and theater schools. The PTSA, Franklin Foundation, Franklin Alumni Association, and Site Council stand willing and able to help. Franklin's principal should be a, prince, a person with the capacity to be an ambassador for Franklin to the rest of the district and city, a, and a tireless gatherer of good ideas and resources from throughout the city that could benefit Franklin's uh, kids and families. <coughs> Franklin and its cluster schools have identities that uh, need support and stewardship to foster a collective state in every school's success. Franklin's principal can and should play a role in making this a reality. In addition to building partnerships within the community, Franklin's principal should be a proven collaborator working with staff and capitalizing on the strengths of the instructional team, students and student empowerment, parents and parent en engagement. Ideally, Franklin's uh, principal should have experience working with a similar student population and have a balanced understanding of the importance of all college and career pathways. Franklin is celebrating its centennial year in this building. Its infrastructure is tired and over the years designed by Ruth Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> and an incoming principal will need to tap the knowledge of head custodian Rob Karen and business manager Steve Matthews to stay, to stay abreast of problems that will be encountered. Joyce Gago is the school's resident historian <laughs> who, who volunteers faithfully in the main office. Michelle Legison and, uh, <coughs> and Jill uh, uh, Register. <laughs> register uh, serve in the main office as well. They are invaluable to uh, any new principal. An incoming principal of Franklin will need to become informed quickly about Franklin's future. The projected uh, schematic design for the schools remodeled during Franklin's future uh, uh, during 2015-17 uh, Preparation for the move of the student body to the Marshall campus in the fall of 2015 and the return of students to the new Franklin in the fall of 2017. A, a principal should be, and this is cribbed from the Wallace Foundation, uh, be good at shaping a vision of academic success for all students, shaping a vision of academic success for, based on uh, high standards, and rigorous learning goals. Creating a climate of uh, hospital <coughs> to education, creating a, a climate uh, that is uh, to education that it, uh, pr provides for safety, a cooperative spirit, and other foundations for fruitful interaction. <coughs> Cultivating leadership in others uh, uh, so that teachers and other adults assume their parts in realizing the school vision and improving instruction uh, to enable teachers to teach at their best and students to learn to their utmost. And management uh, people, data, and processes to foster school improvement. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Again, as a teacher, I've been a teacher at Franklin for 20 years, and I've seen several principals come and go. We face a year of extreme transition, and we are going to be doing that with two of the three administrators being brand new to our building, and our third administrator with one year experience in the building and in PPS. I'm looking for a leader who is strong, strong enough to tell the district, I can't come to the third meeting this week because I need to be in my building. We need a principal who will put the building first, students first, and 
when needed, ignore the call to the district meeting for the fourth time in a week. We need a leader who will work closely with teachers, who um, appreciates what a strong staff that he or she will have. Many of the great programs that we have here at Franklin began with ideas from teachers that then principals like Shay supported and helped come into fruition. My biggest concern is that we will be moving this entire building at the end of the year. And that is really throwing a person <coughs> in the deep end of the pool. And so whoever we get, I need the district to guarantee that they will have the kind of support they need and not be torn in 20 different directions. I want the kids in this building to know that person who is the principal and say, oh, that's our principal, Mr. or Ms. whoever. They've been to my classroom a lot this year and that was awesome. Hi, I'm Elle Wilder, I'm a teacher at Franklin. Um, I wanted to echo what Roger said about what makes Franklin special is its diversity and its need and its achievement and the inner relationship between those three things. And our incoming principal has got to keep up the work that we've done to close the achievement gap. We are very close. And it must be one of his or her primary goals, and especially through the equity work that Shay and Yvonne and Dennis have done and started and been committed to. I also think it's really important that the principal looks at achievement not just from the bottom up, but from the top down as well. Franklin has made its AP program very accessible to students, and um, I would like to see the principal be dedicated to having students take AP classes, but also within that, to make sure that all students are able to take AP classes and encouraged to do so. And then finally, it's really important to have collaborative leadership, like Karen Pola said. We have a lot of really amazing programs at Franklin, and it is because the principal trusted us to be excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't see the move to Marshall make it onto the screen, and that is one of the things I'm most concerned about. It's a daunting task, um, and the teachers, parents, and students need to be communicated to constantly, um, consistently, and uh, with a, a way of instilling confidence that there is someone in charge, and that this new temporary home is going to be excellent for and meet all their needs, um, it's going to be a super stressful year, and the new principal needs to be proactive, immerse themselves in that campus right away, and this one, or get an assistant, somebody needs to take over that big project. Um, and I would imagine it would be the new principal. Hi, I'm Deborah Zavala. I was the co-PTA president here at Franklin for two years, and now I'm on Portland Council PTA. And um, I just wanted to say that um, the new principal here at Franklin needs to be a principal that can work really closely with the PTA. Our PTA here at Franklin is a very strong PTA, and it's a high school PTA, which if you look at some of the high schools, you may not find a really strong <coughs> PTA because in the elementary days and middle school, parents are sometimes really involved, but when they get to high school, a lot of them drop off. And our parent volunteers here are, are active in not only taking their kids to their sports events and drama rehearsals and plays, but also volunteering in the PTA and volunteering in the school. So we need to have a principal that is going to really respect the PTA and want to work strongly with them. Um, I know a lot about transitions because my daughter Perla was in the fire at Marysville School and they were moved to Rose City Park. And the, the principal of Marysville worked very closely with the PTA during that move because she knew that our PTA could help the parents and students in ways that administrators can't. Um, we even moved our PTA meetings from Rose City Park back to Marysville neighborhood to keep parents involved. Um, PTA is every child one voice, so we work for all kids, not just our own kid. I also wanted to say that my daughter Perla um, 
also transitioned here to Franklin. Um, Marshall would have been her neighborhood school, and all my sons went to Marshall. Um, Perla, the thing that really engaged Perla here at Franklin was the arts department. She was in every play all four years here. She was in the choir all four years, and she was in dance class for three years. Now those are things that are important to some people, but not to others, but I think that art adds a lot of enrichment to the students, and it helps their brain in ways, even with dealing with math and everything. So I'm very thankful that the PTA here worked very hard um, all four years to raise money. We gave out over $100,000 to practically every group in the school, including the arts, including sports, to make sure that Franklin was a wonderful school. So to tie it up, I just really do want to say that um, I want this PTA to remain strong and advocate for all the students and families. And I'm really, really hoping for a principal that will come on board and be someone who does respect the parents as more than just volunteers, but as working partners with Franklin and to keep our PTA strong here in this high school and to keep our school strong. Um, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Rebecca Eaton and I'm the incoming membership uh, lead, task lead on the PTSA and my son will be entering Franklin next year. And it seems to me there are a couple key things that are going to be exceptionally important because there's this leadership vacuum essentially during this year of tremendous transition. It's going to be extremely important to get a seasoned leader. I, this is not a, a good environment for a learning principal or somebody who's been an assistant principal. We need an extremely seasoned leader. The other thing is it's as a, as a new parent or as parents looking at Franklin, many would just turn their back and run. We've lost, you know, we don't have a principal, we don't have an assistant principal, we're packing up in a year and moving to a, a new school. So it's going to be very, very important to manage communications. And for example, the Franklin landing page could have said something about the fact that we don't have a principal or assistant principal coming into this year, but managed the communication about it or had some information about this meeting on the landing page of the website, which there is none. There's no information about this gathering on the landing page of our, our school's website. So there's an opportunity, though, to talk about this as a, this could be a positive thing for the school. We're going to have you know, a strong leadership team. So I think that's going to be necessary to continue to attract students and parents and make sure this is a strong community hub it has, has grown to be. So seasoned uh, leadership, very strong, experienced principal, and let's get in front of the communication of what this could mean for the community in, in a positive, upbeat way. Well, I agree with most of what's been said. I agree with <clears throat> the need for strong leadership, which is why I asked earlier about the possibility of an, inter an interim principal. It seems like it's very late in the process. It seems like most of the many people who probably would love to be principal here have already, are recited already, and are not going to be here. And I know that I was in at least one experience prior to this where they needed a new principal late. They got someone who had been a principal for years. He was a nice, calm voice. He was experienced, and he did a great job for that year. And then they were able to select a longer-term principal. Um, the one thing that I've always found unique about Franklin is that it's always seemed to me to be a place with a fair amount of diversity, which has increased in the last few years, where there has not been a stratification, where there have not been cliques, where there seems to be generally one student body, and everybody kind of gets along, and people have their special friends, and people have the kids they hang out with most of the time, but it's not, it's a, it's a, dare I say the word, inclusive place rather than an exclusive place. And I think that <coughs> is always in danger, and I think that Shay has been very good at always keeping that as part of her mind to keep that atmosphere here at Franklin among the students. Thank you. You and then to you, Kamala. My name is Kathy Kirshner. I'm a parent of an incoming senior this year. Um, when they started here at Franklin, it was the first year that the Marshall kids were incorporated, and I think that the leadership and the staff went out of their way to make certain that everyone felt involved. It wasn't an us them 
it wasn't a, oh, the poor Marshall kids lost their school, so let's just all be really nice to them. It was, a, okay, you're here, these are the rules, we expect you to obey them. Um, we've talked about some of the things that are um, here too, a seasoned leader, a strong leader. I think we also need a leader who can think fast on their feet. With this year of transition, with just the physical, t <coughs> taking people completely out of the picture, just the physical move, requiring every single item in this building to be taken over to Marshall is going to require someone that can identify key leaders amongst their staff right away and start delegating tasks to them, doesn't try and do it all themselves, communicates, but communicates in a very deliberate, discerning manner. Um, we've all seen communications that have gone out about 30 minutes before they should have, and it just creates a lot more problems in the long run. Another factor that I think is going to be critical is a sense of humor. And that's going to be very, very critical, again, with all of the turmoil and transition, not only this next year, but the year after. A principal with a sense of humor who can laugh at themselves, who can laugh at the district, who can laugh at their students if need be, and laugh with their students is more critical than anything else. I'm Maggie. I'm her daughter, and I'm Roger's kid. Um, I'm the incoming senior. And one thing from a student perspective that would be really crucial to the incoming principal is having a sense of comfort and the sense of community. Um, Miss James did a really fantastic job of making us all be aware that we're Quakers and to be all proud of that. And especially going into a transition year, it's going to be really nerve-wracking for a lot of students, especially incoming freshmen, because they're not going to have that sense of community. And transitioning to Marshall, we still want to be Franklin at Marshall campus. And I really think a principal who has that sense in their mind that this is still all about the Quakers, it's still all about Franklin pride, and then also a, a principal who's willing to have fun. I know personally as a student, some of my favorite memories at Franklin were having fun here, like some of the pep assemblies, different football games, and things like that. Really focusing on the fun, I think, would help the transition for the students to go smoothly and to feel that they're still at Franklin, just in a different building. I'm David Trotter. I've been here 21 years. Uh, both James and Lee say hi. I was gonna say, you look so I'm gonna do it. Um, the best thing we can do. Can you come back? Yeah. Come, come take over. Come leave the district and come take over here for us, please. This is an attractive place. I got to say. And we could do a lot worse. Um, John was my kid's principal for ten years, so grade school. So I have great faith in him and what he does. Um, if we can't get you to come back. <laughs> then the biggest concern I would have is that the principal who comes in realizes that Franklin is not like any of the other schools in the district. We have an administrator who famously their opening remarks were, I'm so happy to be here at Wilson. <laughs> that was, that was yeah. here, that was their opening yeah. remark at their very first staff meeting, very first day. Um, when, when, <laughs> when administrators come in and try and do things, well this works at one of these schools or one of these other schools, it doesn't work because Franklin's not one of the, even, you know, you look at our test scores, which I've been testing coordinator for most of the last decade, and so our test scores do very well. And traditionally, we have always ranked up at the top with Grant and Lincoln and Wilson. Um, but when you look at our socioeconomics, you don't expect that because it's all the way spread up and down. My fear is we get a principal who comes in and wants to do the same thing that works at Grant, at Lincoln, at Wilson. It doesn't work here because that only works for a small segment. And if you try and do the same thing that works at some of the lower achieving schools in the district, that doesn't work because that only hits a small segment. So whoever comes in has got to be willing to recognize that we've got a full spread. And when Franklin has functioned best, it's when we've got a principal just that serves the entire community and not the top part or not the bottom part or not the middle part, but looks at the entire impact across the board. So it really is a unique, I know every school thinks they're unique, but Franklin really is because of the socioeconomic diversity, 
Um, you look at the racial diversity, and it's more than it used to be, but it's not what people would expect from this from this neighborhood. Um, so you have to approach the entire spectrum and not just work on the top kids, or not just work on the bottom kids, or not just work on the middle kids, because if you do that, you're going to lose a significant yes. part. And as I say, when we've had problem years here at the school, it's been when the administration has tried to implement, this is what works at this top school, this is what works at this lower school, without taking into account that we're not predominantly one or the other. We got the whole spectrum and they all need to have their needs met. Yes. So when we serve the community as a whole, that's when we function the best. <coughs> Just one last thought, well actually it's two. One, I want a principal who knows their contracts, not just the teacher's contracts, but the contracts with the classified and our custodians because you know, the better you know that contract, the fewer problems we have down the line. And secondly, I want a principal who's positive. These are challenges, but I want the person to face them in a positive way. We don't need any negative Nellies or negative Nicks in our building. We need people who will solve problems in positive ways. All right, so I'm Sierra Jose. I'll be an incoming senior this next year. Um, and something that I think is really important about Franklin and, and incoming principals is to be flexible. Um, and I, I keep hearing, like, I guess the way that I'm interpreting a few of the ways that people have said, we're going to have all these changes, everyone kind of seems scared. You need someone who's going to be confident and who's, who knows that it's going to go well. If not, not everything is going to go well, but you have to have the confidence that it will. Um, and then understanding that you can delegate leadership opportunities to the students is very important. We have a couple <coughs> leadership classes, we have the student union, we have many different groups at Franklin, and I think it's important for them to know they can rely on the students to help get everyone together. <laughs> um, and then I also appreciate a principal who would encourage the staff and the teachers to really team up and do different things together. Because sometimes I see that and sometimes I don't, but I think it's really important that all the teachers know what's going on and they all know that we can do this project together, we can do different subjects and we can make this a group thing. Um, I think that'd be cool, but I, I know that that's something that could come down the line now. Um, I'm Darcy Mundorf and I am a parent here at Franklin. And I think it's crucial that our next administrator support our nationally recognized advanced scholar program. It has been in existence for six years and it has grown to include about one third of our students, which is about 500 students here at Franklin. Um, so it, the students here think it's cool to be smart and we need to continue to foster that theme and that idea. Um, so our next principal has to give this program the support necessary to continue it in a successful manner. Um, we also have a wide range of AP classes, which just goes along with the it's cool to be smart theme. So it's clear that everybody in the Franklin community um, values the jump start to college that AP classes can provide. So it would be a shame to have a leader who downplayed the benefit of these classes. Um, the teachers and staff at Franklin have done an incredible job of attracting and retaining historically underrepresented students in the AP classes. So this too has been a factor in helping to close the achievement gap here at Franklin. Um, and finally, I think we need somebody who either can delegate or is willing to just give more shout outs and more PR to all the great things that are happening at Franklin because there's a lot of really great things and I and feel like people outside of the Franklin community don't know about them, they're unaware. So, more, more classical. My name is Kim Wallen, parent. And one group that hasn't um, been acknowledged, but I think it's really important to the Franklin community, are the alumni. Um, our alumni really support this school, I feel. Um, I feel that when we have programs uh, that people, parents show up, grandparents show up, there are people that, um, at, at my church, that graduated from Franklin and they talk about Franklin. And I think that's another group that um, we should be reaching out to and the principal should be working with. Hi, I'm Jessica Lee.
name is Chris Myers. I'm a parent of a, a ninth grader and eleventh grader this year, and I've worked for close to twenty years as uh, an administrator and now a librarian in high schools, albeit private ones, Central Catholic and Oregon Episcopal School. Um, and I strongly believe in the heroic ideal of leadership, and I, I think we probably all share the goal that we'll have someone who's inspiring and, and visionary and um, for whom the teachers and the staff will be really excited to work and about whom the parents and the students will be proud to say that is my principal and I can look to that person for, for great strong leadership. But I also think based on my observation and my experience that a lot of what makes a principal great has nothing to do with that inspiring, visionary, heroic ideal. And I think this is gonna come into particular focus at Franklin the next three years with the move to the Marshall campus. I think there's a lot of detail and relationship building and communication. Uh, it, it'll take patience, it'll take listening, and it'll take a tremendous level of organization and other things that people have mentioned, like the ability to delegate. Like Dave was saying, the ability to figure out what's really strong already here. Um, and I, so it takes a really, really special person. I'm, I'm excited that we will find that person, but I would also associate myself with Jeremy's comment that if we cannot find a person who's really gonna be a great fit and meet all those different requirements, I hope we'll pick a great experienced interim for a year and throw this open for over a longer term where we can get more good candidates and really get a great leader for Franklin. <laughs> and listening, being a good listener. Um, I'll interrupt real briefly too, by the way, and say I want to make sure that um, everybody here gets a chance to talk tonight. So if towards the end of the uh, time here, if you haven't said something, I might ask if you um, are interested in saying something. And, it's like I tell people, it's not share or die, so you don't have to talk if you don't want to. And we also have uh, some of the written uh, surveys here too, so if you think, well, I want to go home and write something even on hard copy or send an email, follow up email, that's fine too. So, who next? Just one more thing. I, I want to know that our principal is a real person, like not just that they're physically there, but that they've had struggles and that they've been able to overcome them. And I think it's important for students to know that this isn't a perfect person, but they're trying the best that they can and they know that they have experience behind what they're doing. And I think that that's something important that not just the staff knows, but also the students, so they have confidence in the <coughs> This is more about the process, but I am concerned that it's limited to internal candidates. I just don't see how one could argue that you know you're going to get the best fit. It feels like a very narrow search. And um, I've been through four principal searches now over my years. Um, we, I think we're talking about the same interim. And he was great. That school was in crisis. We needed to all calm down. He was a very warm, comforting presence. But I feel like that, um, that is a risk, given the stuff that needs to continue to move forward, the upward trajectory you know, of academics here. I feel like we could level out. And I wonder why we're not going external with this uh, right away, um, given the late date. And I also um, understood your comments about the community interview panel and the issues with that, but I, the schools that I've been involved in that had that process, the benefit was there was buy-in early on from the people who tend to be the leaders of the community who then go out and engage their 10 people, who then go out and engage their 10 people, and all of a sudden everybody's super excited about that principle um, I never experienced what you were describing. It was super top secret. My best friend would not tell me anything. And, um, and so I think we're losing something important. And I know the Roosevelt community asked for this last night. And I feel like you're short, the district is shortchanging the schools by leaving that piece out. 
So I want to make sure we get uh, kids in the watch this and this is advocating for um, Well, are these the notes Carol Smith is going to read? Yeah. Or is she going to watch the tape? Because that's great, right, but it's detail? super narrow. Yeah. I think she wants to, we want to document that she's concerned uh, about not having a, a school-based interview committee and wants to have that and maybe a little bit more detail. But I also want to respond, I want to make sure that I didn't imply that we weren't doing external. So I want to make sure we, the, the pool is open. We've had people from all of the United States applying and we're looking at them. But in terms of the possible lateral move within Portland, it's just people that we know in Portland that are principal that would be eligible for that kind of lateral move. So it is posted. Yeah, it's posted. We've got, we've already had some, yeah, we've had some people that have been named principal that came from Washington, D.C. We've had some people from um, uh, Arizona. So there's, yeah, so it's definitely um, external uh, applicants. So, yes. So, uh, you said that she would like to also be the principal or the teachers and a uh, counselor or who it may be, but we might be <coughs> the president so that there is communication between all parts of the faculty and with the parent and just the president instead of just being with one person with a misunderstanding or any type of confusion and then when there is no resolution that it becomes an issue where there needs to be a meeting with the principal and once again, all the people are connected. So like when there, especially when there's conflict, it sounds like one somebody that's open and will communicate with all people involved, but communicate openly um, so that they involve the students and uh, parents and the staff and everybody there so they all know what's happening. Yeah, yeah that's possible. That's, that's definitely a big part of what we want in our principal. Mm -hmm. Yes. My name is Michelle Lobison. just from my past three years of being a student here with Ms. James and also Ms. Dibley, is they both had this open door policy. So if they were in the office and they didn't have meetings or anything, their doors were open, they were always willing to talk to students, they were willing to talk to staff. And the next principal and even next vice principal we have, I feel needs to carry on that policy. I know personally it had helped me build a personal relationship with both of them and having that option for students to come in and talk to them, not necessarily about school things, but <coughs> just about whatever, to know that there is someone that cares for them, I think would be really beneficial, especially with transferring schools. Um, this is less of a statement about specific characteristics for the principal, but rather 
choosing the right principal, I think, is going to be very crucial because with the move to Marshall, with the um, renovation of Franklin, this is just phase one of a 30-year bond, <coughs> so it feels like all eyes are going to be on Franklin for the next few years and Roosevelt, and here are two schools that are undergoing tremendous change out externally from the move itself and the renovation, and now we're having to deal with the new principal too. So I, I think it's really in the best interest of the district to really take time and make sure it's the correct principal in place at both of these schools, rather than just, it's a warm body in the office, <laughs> move on. So. On somewhat of a humorous note, the new principal has to pass the Joyce test. If, if Joyce does not like this person, they need to keep moving. <laughs> Are you the historian, Joyce, that yeah. they're talking about? Okay. Yes. Deborah Zavala, parent. One thing I have heard is that um, we've asked about communication, but we haven't said that it would be really great to have a bilingual or multilingual principal. Um, it doesn't have to be, but it would be very, very helpful, especially in the ministry marshal, in communicating with parents. Um, and then, also about the process, I would like to formally request that Portland Public School District reconsider and change their policy now for this principal process concerning not including parents and staff on the hiring committee. It's too important for this community, and I believe that there should be at least one parent and one teacher, well not teacher, staff, um, represented on the hiring committee. I have sat on committees before, I don't want to be on this one, <laughs> but um, I do believe you can have a confidentiality agreement and have it signed and enforce it, and I believe that you can get upstanding parents and staff that would definitely 100% be confidential. Um, and then my question is, without having a parent or staff on the hiring committee, who is going to be the person that stands up for us for what the community has said they wanted um, specifically to stand up and say, hey, but the parents said that this was really important to us and this so-and-so candidate isn't exactly that person, maybe somebody else is, or same with the staff. Who's going to be the person that represents us? If we don't have one parent and one staff on the hiring committee, it's really important to me and as a community member and a um, PTA person to have a parent and a staff on the hiring committee. So in partial answer to that, um, and I'm glad that we're documenting that request. Uh, in my opinion, I don't want to put Greg in the spot, but I, I, I see and have experienced Greg and now Shay, who will be on that committee as well, uh, working with that as your two main champions, and Greg has been kind of a consistent champion and advocate for Franklin and everything here. He's always spoken up uh, very much for that. So I know he wants to do a good job because he's going to be working with the person here just like Shay will, and they want things to go well too. They want the best as well um, for them. So yes, I'll bring that back to you. any contact information for anyone who's coming in on a temporary basis or who she would contact if she had concerns about her <coughs> student or what's going on with the transition to the new school, what's going on with the transition um, as far as hiring somebody new, how are you going to communicate with her and other parents that someone has been hired, um, what, where you guys are at in the process. And she said, just like your PowerPoint was printed out, she did the, uh, the contact information printed out as well. She needs to know who she can contact, especially in the second line. Yeah, I know in cases like this in different schools, um, each school is a little different in how we communicate, for instance, the, uh, the final selection. So I'm not sure about exactly about this school and who's going to send it out, but typically we try to send out letters and emails and uh, you know as much information as is appropriate for that school community to let them know who the next person is going to be and then how to get in touch with them usually through the school office. to know 
goals, if there was a concern about her student, who can she communicate with at this time or until you hire somebody new? Uh -huh. And if she can get a printout of that, that would be Um Did you hear the question, Greg? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, you should contact the school office. And uh, Michelle right here is your contact in the office. And there is it, it's still administrator on the board, that's Dennis. And again, uh, Shay is still in the picture, as well as myself. And so there are people around who can help you if you have a concern during the summer break. There's fewer people than usual, but there are still people on board. And then on the 15th of August, I believe, is when the whole- The 11th. The 11th, thank you, is when the support staff comes back into the building and the counselors will be available and so forth to help you out. Adding on to the um, request about having uh, at least one parent and one staff involved with the whole decision process of hiring a principal, I feel a student or students should also be involved. The principal and the school is for the students and it's about how we achieve our education to further us into college and I feel without that student perspective on that college, on that committee and only having a parent perspective and a staff perspective, you're not going to get the full picture. John, where are things now in the process for replacing Shay here at, at Franklin? I mean, are, is it to the point where you guys are just now starting to form the search committee? Are you reviewing applications already? Have you identified candidates that you're currently talking to? Uh, you know, going back to your matrix that you showed earlier, are we at step one, two, three, four, or are we all the way at step 12 and we're kind of too late? Uh, no, you're not too late. Um, We've had people, especially since the posting has been um, set up uh, with, without a closing date on it, we've had some people that have gone through the process already and were selected. We have some people who are really, really good, but they're in the final pool and haven't had the best match yet. So typically, towards the end of the year, it's very likely that there's going to be some people in the final pool that did not get a job because we wanted to make sure we had an adequate pool. But we also have some people that recently maybe found out about some of the possibilities here or had colleagues that said to them, you should apply because I'm hearing such and such is gonna open. And so there's some people that are at step two, step three, I think. So I, I'm, I'm gonna be doing some reference calls on them. They, you know, I had some screening interviews and things too. So there's some that are just late uh, coming, but we're really trying to expedite the process so that we can get them looked at as quickly as possible. Well, the committee looks at, you know, they, they start looking at that whole pool and they start looking at possibilities. It's, there are some surprises where somebody says, hey, I just took a job in another district or I'm moving, you know, so they have to kind of keep that flexible. But sometimes they know if, if there is going to be an opening, sometimes they can say, that's somebody that we should look at, but we want to get the community input first. So that's when they tell the applicants, you haven't gotten something yet, but we're still looking and there's still some jobs being open. So... We haven't, get, we haven't um, tapped out the, the pool at all yet, and we're still looking and asking people to consider coming to Portland School so that we can uh, get that going as much as possible. So yes? He asked how big is the pool. <laughs> is this the kiddie pool you're saying, or is this the big one? Uh, I'll answer that in a minute. Let me answer that in a minute. It's, I have to kind of, I have to kind of sit and think about that. But I, I'd be glad to, to let you know. Um, let me let me think about that number because there's been some changes and some things people selected just recently. That's so. okay. I don't need a definitive number. I'm just looking for a guesser. Okay. So, because I, there's no way to have apps that just came in. Yeah. So. I, I'd say right about now there's probably six. And there's four that are in process that we haven't for sure gotten there, but they're looking really good. So, um, and as far as the current openings, for right. all right. Six. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I need. Yes. So if you have identified, say, a person who's with, who is a, um, an internal person, could this potentially start a domino effect of principles throughout the district? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, she asked, well, is there a domino effect when you take a principle, an internal principle and move? And yes, there's definitely a domino effect. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that they discuss a lot is, you know, the value of if this person's a great match for that school, but what is the effect on that school that they're leaving, especially when it gets late? So, um, yeah, so that, that's definitely something that they talk about a lot, about what does that final constellation and what does that final effect, uh, what is that going to be like? So one other question that I like to ask too in some of the meetings, and I know we're starting to get close to the end of this, is um, you don't have to speak about this now if you don't want, but I also like to know what voices we're not hearing from tonight, uh, because I don't know your community really well, uh, but there might be certain groups of people or certain um, uh, community members or whatever that that, um, that we'd like to hear from. Um, I would say um, if that's the case, it, we can use your help in if you know some of these people or some of the contacts, if you could also reach out to them and give them the information about the survey or the email list, uh, that would be helpful. Well, a couple of things, look around the room. We're missing some parents of color we're missing some students of color. We don't have anyone from our partner programs here, the Sun School, um, the health clinic. Um, so just some of the people that are here in our building that aren't here right now. Um, personally, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, in terms of the comparison of the two buildings, you mean? Okay. Yeah. Oh. The classroom number is about the same size as Franklin now. And we did an analysis of moving all of our teachers and students over there, and it's going to just fit. That's where we're at at this point. In terms of who's missing, um, yeah. <laughs> missing people of color is, is quite obvious, but um, I also suspect, I don't know, but I suspect that the teacher who talked about the, the range of socioeconomic status, I suspect that what we have here in this room is not representative of that entire range. I want to echo what's been said by Ms. Paulus and by, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. My name's Julia. My Julia, I'm sorry. Um, I feel that when I look around the room here, it's kind of the usual suspects. Yeah. Most of us who are here tonight are people who are here because we are interested. And that's not to say that other parents aren't. The flip side of that, however, is that I do feel that all of us have the interest of every single student at this school in our core. It's not just Meggie I'm concerned about. It's not just Maria I'm concerned about. It's not just it's not just Maggie, it's not just any but any one specific child. I'm concerned about all of the kids in the school. So I really I do feel we do a good job um, at representing everybody's interests. However, I also know that there are students that are not being heard from, that are families that are not being heard from, that really do need to get into this process. And like you said, John, I think us getting a hold of some of those families that we know. Um, through some of the students that are here, contacting some of your other student friends, get the information out there on how other people can contribute. And I don't think the district cares if it's two words or 200 words or two pages. They want to hear what we want in a principal, and I think that's critical. My name is Alice Weinstein. Um, I've been at Franklin for three years and I teach English as a second language. And so I, I'd like to um, take a peek over there in B's direction because she's spoken quite a few times. And I have about 133, I think, ESL students here at the school. And I don't see any parents of my students here except for Hefsby. And that does concern me. And so, Deborah, what you said about having parent representation and teacher represent, or rather staff member representation on the hiring committee, 
interesting. Um, and I think this occurred to me. Might it be wise to have a parent who is from the Marshall area in particular, as well as a Franklin person? And, and I don't mean that to sound divisive, but the majority of my ESL kids are from the Marshall area because our population expanded a lot when we got the Marshall kids. And that concerns me also. And I, and I really do regret not seeing more parents of my kids here. Um, and perhaps we might look at some other populations, maybe parents with students with some learning issues. Um, that, that also, I, I'm not aware of who's attached to who here, but that also concerns me in terms of representation on a hiring committee, in terms of inclusivity. Thank you for that. Um, you made me think of something. I, I do want to say that a lot of times parents of what we may label special need kids, a lot of times don't come to this meeting because they're really tired. <laughs> I mean, I do have a son with autism and I used to represent him a lot, but it's, it's a lot of work getting them to their speech therapy and everything else and then trying to come to a community meeting. So I would like to see parents of kids with, that have any kind of disabilities be represented I also wanted to say that my husband was here, Alfredo Zavala, he had to leave for a class, and I want to apologize. Um, my daughter and my husband are Yaki, Indian, and Mexican. My husband did fill out the survey in Spanish, so it's ready. In fact, you can have it. <laughs> and um, I wish that he was here because he really does and has been a great leader on our PTA in representing um, people that speak other languages than English. And he's been um, a good role model and reached out to other parents and families and um, you know try to get people to come to meetings so I do believe that not just people of color but people that speak other languages we do need to really reach out to them and get their voice heard too but I want to thank you for having this community meeting and thank you for answering my question about the committee I do hope that it changes to include a parent and a staff it gives me comfort that Shay James is going to be on the committee and even Greg and I know that they will try to <laughs> sorry <laughs> And, and I know that they will try to stand up for parents and staff, but I do want to say that I believe also that the parent perspective is um, a very individual perspective. Of course Shay would re represent us, but having a parent on the committee is, is a pretty important thing to me, and I, I'm sure that the staff feel that way too. So thank you again, and also thank you for everybody that came tonight, but I want to single somebody out, Fi Lung. I'm really proud of you, Fee, and thank you so much for coming. She's a PTA member here at Franklin, and I hope that you guys will include her more next year. She's been an awesome parent and um, representative for Vietnamese families in this school. So I am uh, looking at the time here, and I think we are past the time that we uh, set for you out there. I didn't want to cut anybody off, so I was going to mention just a couple things. One is that um, I can stay around if there's something that you want to make sure that we added. Uh, but I'll also mention, um, and I'll come to your question here, um, if, you know, obviously it's hard to kind of get capture all of your words tonight. So if you think, boy, I said some things, but I didn't feel like that flavor came in there, if you could either come up and let me know that or send an email to Miley at that link there. If you want to add that uh, to clear it up, we want to make sure that we're getting clear information about that. So, On that, I wondered if we could just see the top page briefly just to sort of be able to scan uh, for a moment okay. what was written down. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah so that looks like the top page. Okay. And then you can scroll it a little bit. So, just yes. I'm hearing a lot of people say yes, they will. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if I see anything about the arts, but what Deborah said on there in that list. The arts program was here at, at Franklin. Scroll Can you down. scroll down and see if that's something that's on there? And I forget who Deborah is. The Deborah is the oh, there it is. Well, the arts programs have been really important. The PTA has supported them through our fundraising. But, uh, and they're building a brand new um, stage on the corner, so it's important to the building. We can just add it at the bottom there, too. We can just put it in there again. Then yeah, and I don't, I don't see the thing about advanced scholar program. Uh, it is there. Okay. Okay. So, say again about the program. Yeah,
That's why the arts know. programs have been a priority um, to the redesign. We're having a brand new theater built. And so not just drama, but choir, instrumental music, um, visual arts. We want that to remain a priority. And the, the principal that we select, we would like to have them have high standards and support for the arts here at Franklin to continue that. Yes. So if we're going to get an interim principal, and maybe even just for any principal, like uh, Michelle was saying, could PPS commit to hiring someone to take on this mood so that we can all feel that that stress is out of the equation? Somebody besides the principal. And I'm guessing some people from the office I, might... I just have to yeah. say that Steve Matthews is like the man. In regards to the renovation and the move to Marshall, we have had a, uh, I guess, a plan in place for several months, and we've been working on the move to Marshall uh, for a year now. And uh, the process is in place. We have actually construction going on this summer. There's going to be a new turf field put in place. There's a lot of uh, renovations going on inside the school. There's a preliminary plan on, on how the layout is going to be changed to accommodate all of our programs that we have here at Franklin that will be moving over to Marshall. We, we're working on the parking lot, we're working on student parking, on staff parking. Everything is has been uh, discussed. Uh, we've made some field trips over there as administrators to look at the school site and how it's going to be uh, changed to, to work with our program. So, We've been doing stuff on that for a long time. And at the same time, we've been meeting daily, it seems like, with uh, committees, both staff and community, on dealing with the renovation of Franklin and what those, what those uh, particular sites will look like, both the site plan and then now we're into the detailed uh, design plan where we're looking at rooms individually and what they look like. We've had Sun involved, we've had Step Up, we've had the Arts Program involved, we've had everybody in the school that signed up on the committee to come and share their thoughts about what the school's going to look like internally. Uh, so I think that we're well ahead of the curve in regards to being ready for a move to Marshall as well as a move back to Franklin. So yes, we can. So it sounds like there was some anxiety about how much the principal is involved, but it sounds like you're going to continue working on that or even leading that uh, process. Is that accurate? Okay. <laughs> if I were the incoming principal, I know what I would say. because I know I'm really listening to this too because I like to get sort of the overall feel and a lot of it had to do with that and I so it sounds like you're saying if we kind of knew that then we, you could have maybe focused on some other so things and what yeah exactly. okay okay so well I'm sure that's the that's the goal <laughs> as far as the specific timing that's always the hardest question for me because just about the time I think oh this will be really hard or really tough, sometimes you can get surprises, but I'm guessing that for sure, Greg, if this makes sense to you, that for sure we want to get somebody in place, we want to take the time to make a good decision and yet balance that off and working as quickly as we can um, and have something in place for sure before teachers come back to school or... Um, He said there'll be somebody here in place when school starts, whether it's an interim or a permanent. So, did you have a... Okay, okay, good. Yep, yeah. So, so I apologize if I haven't gotten to everybody tonight, but I, like I said, I am willing to stay around if you, there's other comments that you want to give me. Um, but yes, Greg. Just want to add that, um, besides listening here, I've also been taking my own notes, yeah. and so I can take those to the meeting when we have the committee. But also, if you want to take a look at this again, 
um, please come up afterward and you can look through what, you, what your statement was and make sure it says accurately reflects what you wanted to say. So take the time to do that now. You're welcome to do so. And thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs>